Hi, Mark Savage here. Welcome to my channel, part two. Panels off, nice and slowly. First thing I want to do, I always get the bucket off first. 10 mil socket, easy as pie. Sometimes the cable in here gets pushed off, broken, and a lot of these can't get up. People often break the panels. It's over this side anyway. But lucky enough, this works. I want to show you later the mechanism in here. Now, obviously there's some issue to this bike, none of which involve not getting this bucket up. Three bolts in here. One, two, and the third one's not there. Small little glove box pulls out by hand. And literally, we just leave all that up. So the young girl, we covered that seat. What a brilliant job of that. Nice and easy. Cable tires. Anyway, <laughs> let's carry on with this because it's all going to come off. Right, this front panel here, there's four bolts. One, two, three, four. That's all that side. This side, there's a few bolts under here, but they're not here. As you can see, that's something I don't like, and that's something that I will make sure it's secure. You can't have it wrapping around. You can't have this doing this. Okay, really does affect it. We're gonna look at the water here. Now, normally you can undo these few little bolts here. There's one there and two here, and we can get this up and check the water. I'm just gonna take the whole thing off, because I don't know what's been done. Firstly, Cable tie. I don't like cable ties. I know they have a purpose, but I don't like them. I'd rather use put the bolts. Right. Missing bolt. <sighs> right, this shouldn't do this with just two bolts holding it on. Mm. Well, one of my fears was that it might be running dry. It's not running dry. Right, this is very, very simple. That's not right, obviously. These are ordinary bulbs, but they're 35 watt, not 55, 60, 35. A lot of people put bigger bulbs in these, and they're just dimmer. You have to use 35. Should be clicked in like that. And this is how to adjust it here. If you fail your MOT, because obviously the beam is lower or higher. We're gonna have to do a bit of gluing here and working out what's gone wrong with this, basically. But it should have took more than just two bolts. There's four here. quickly show you the bolts I've just took off so far. One, two, three, four. And they are this sort. All of this has got to come off anyway. This has got to come off to find a power regulator down there, as we see. And this should have been where the other two bolts were here that held it on. With the radiator, so it's got water on it. I'm going to drain all of that out. We're going to put nice, fresh water in this radiator and pump it through. As for the seat bucket, one, two, three. Out comes this bit, it just pulls up. And you've got instant access to the engine. You can see these are not original. This must be what the dad done or the daughter done here. That is supposed to be where the uh, blue plug is. Right, there should be a little plug on there. It's been all cut, but that's what temperature gauge is there. Obviously, fault we're talking here. Not often do bikes have this. This is the other long bit of the air filter. I've often took this off, if I'm honest with you. Um, it just comes off, and I've just left that on there. 
a lot more air in, especially with a sports exhaust. We'll have a look though, because sometimes you mess around with this and it just won't run. Also, we're going to check the jet out. Standard jet 5456. If it hasn't got a number on it, then it's been messed with. Okay? All of the original ones have got a messed number with them. That's not original. That is, so we've got to get all this off anyway. And then it's just finding one, two here. There should be one there as well. This one underneath, this comes off. To get this one off, you'll see there's another bolt. It just comes off from over here as well. We just take this one. Uh, you see, this is just not what it's supposed to be. That's cracked. I don't know what this spray is. This, this I, I think this is dangerous, okay? It's not supposed to be like that at all. This bit is held on with a bolt here and a bolt in here. We can see that there's a, there's a, see that's, that's why I checked the bikes over. That's not right. Missing bolt here, missing bolt there, one on here. Again, we're talking, we're snapped here, aren't we? Even if they put a bolt in here, it would have been helpful. There is one bolt in here holding that on. I couldn't say how well that is doing it, but again, it's not right. This is dangerous. Should be brakes. Shouldn't be dangling down like that. There's a clip to hold that up. So the whole front end was held on with two bolts. I took nothing else off, and it's nearly falling off. In fact, I'm pretty sure if I'm done one bolt, the whole bottom end's going to come off there. <sighs> Bit dangerous. Um, that's not the slate the person had to bite before, because at the end of the day, I don't know how different really. But that's what I'd do. And look. This is held on with one bolt, two bolt, one in here, one here and one here. Five hold this clock on. I can tell you there's only two, maybe one holding it on. Um, it's finger tight. That's not even holding it down. That one neither. What often happens is that the little clips I showed you on the front end, these little things, they break and people just don't do anything to it. So we're missing so many bolts snapped here. There's supposed to be two bolts holding this on as well. I think there's probably a handful of bolts holding this whole bike together. That would have made riding uncomfortable, especially along bumpy roads. It felt the bike's just coming apart. Mm, not happy. Um, it's something that I will make sure that there's a bolt in every hole. We can't we'll put a, another nut on the other side of it. We'll secure it. This bike will be solid, but, you go. It's it's simple, it really is. There's two bolts here, lucky enough. These wires were holding the indicators on, but we need to check. That's why I get a power meter. They've all been messed with, so we've got a power meter to find out. I've took one bolt out, and that's just fell on the floor. later I'll drill a bolt, uh, a nut, uh, I'll put a screw in, get it right in a minute, and go through the plastic into here and that will at least secure it because there's nothing more to be done to the back end of here because it's snapped. Okay so that's what we're going to do there, secure that and again with this bit we're going to do all this lot as well. Again I think there's only, what is it, you know, one here. So we've got three bolts this side. Four, a lie. One here. Cable tie there. So it seems. The possibility of about 20 25 bolts. Two, four, 
seven. This is also held on the back there. Uh, no, it's not. Okay. Under here, there's another bolt that holds all this up. And two bolts here hold that down. And obviously they're holding the sides here as well. This has not happened here. We've got three little wires that hold the back light. And they are different sizes, so that's lucky on this one. Now, this is the cable I mentioned before. WD-40 it, just clean it all up and here's the mechanism. You see it pops down and you just put it up. Often this is missing, that's broken. And that part there is broken. It's lovely to see it's not on this one and it works fine. The rear light you can't get wrong, they are three different sizes. WD-40, I'm going to clean all that up. And often these two bolts here are broken, not on this one. But we've got snapped, snapped, one, two. So this side is a bit buggered to be honest with you. It's a bit of a shame, isn't it? So we're going to have to clean that up. And this is the rear panel. I've had so many of these. <laughs> Over the years, it seems a shame that I've got rid of so much stuff. But uh, you know, have to do something with that, whether I put tape over it and then fill it full of glue and then glue all this up. But something's got to be done. Now it's not finished yet. Clocks. Again, there should be five bolts holding this on. Speedo's not attached. Here's the here's the indicators. Wonder why it's not working. Well, hello. Someone's messed with this as well. That's dangling out. So this may be a reason why your indicators weren't working. These little wires here hold on the plugs for your indicators and your dash. Clean WD-40, clean WD-40. There's four nuts that hold this in. It's got one and a half. I've seen so many times that people try and rip this off rather than just taking the whole thing off. And there we go, the speeder wasn't working. Forgot to mention that. Because <laughs> it wasn't plugged in at all. Um, easy way of testing that if it works. If you spin the wheel and you see if that turns round, let's have a look. Yes it does, slowly goes round. So I haven't got to mess with speedo drive or the cable, but it wasn't working. And I said this is maybe why the indicator is not working. Let's just plug that in and see whether it's right or not. Got green there. Someone's obviously messed with this. Millie, shush. This may save me having to pull away all of the electrics. Right, I've got rear indicators, but obviously I haven't got the front indicators on, so they're just going to stay on. And they're very dim, which is a bit odd. Very odd. So, I don't even think that is actually a Speed Fight 1. <sighs> We're going to have to test that out, aren't we? Water. Disgusting. 
It's full though. Best way of draining these out is to take off the pipe bottom one, take it off, drain the water out. Best way of doing it, refilling it, and then squidging the pipe to get it all through. You run it for a little while with a cap off, okay? Now these are called expansion tanks, which means it shouldn't be chuck a block full. But it's an expansion. Air and stuff comes out. So you have it slightly lower, that much lower than the top, and you use good quality antifreeze. I asked about two T oil and the young girl said to me that they've used Halfords ones, which are brilliant. They really are. Just not your car plan. And I wanted to see whether this has I mean, you go. In there is supposed to be a rubber ring. I think I've got one. This may be why you can smell petrol all the time. So again, maybe good that two simple little things I've found that I haven't got to do investigate too much, but I'm not, not impressed with that. And I have to check whether that's the right way around or not. Put that indicators on, drain the water out. And there you go, front end. Nice radiator. Now this wheel, obviously it's on a stand. What we're looking for is a line normally down the fairing and this wheel should be straight. Otherwise what happens, you'll ride down the road like this, or you can the wear on the wheel. Now, looking at this wear, new tyre, actually looks pretty good. And it passed a recent MOT, and the guy really should not notice whether the front end's twisted or not. Headstock, I've gone over this many times, you have to get this out of the way, you really do. And in here, just inside there, which you can see has been hammered round, there is three, one, two, three, you can just about see them. You take the top one off, tap the two bottom ones round, and then put the top one round to lock it on. What happens is this front end, it's got bearings here and bearings in here, just gets loose, rattles about, it can really become dangerous. Now I can't tell because all this was rattling around whether the actual headstock needs doing or not. And here's your ignition said this many times, I've got a video on this ignition as well, how to get these off. Um, they're snap bolts, they can be a little bugger, you've got to get them out. Down there is the little bolt in there. You've got to literally cut it all off, put a new one on. But they're non-immobilised, which is great. Otherwise, deep in here, you'd have your immobilised unit. I've got a video on these, watch that about the immobiliser. You can see this one's got an oil one here because it's a later model. You have some on this side, but this one here is an oil CDI. And it's grey. There's black and there's grey ones. Don't just buy one, take it off before. As I said before, there's four mobilizers, a little four pin one that goes here, a black or grey one that goes here, and then one that goes in there. That's the biggest bugger on that is gets immobilized. But all of a sudden the bike doesn't look very much now, does it? I may not have to take that off now. I've now realised that it's not the power regulator. It's the indicators are just messed up, so I've played with them. But there you go. That's one little speed fight. Pretty simple, really. Next videos, we're going to look at the Petri. That's not right. That's not right. There's your oil. I'm going to get this off, do this, have a look in here, and get all the engine side done. This bike, at some time its life has been over. I don't know any peds that have not been over. I really don't. Um, and again, I call them mopeds. Please don't go on about mopeds and scooters. I do know about the pedals in 1970. But here in the UK, on the logbook, they are mopeds. Scooters are classed as Vespers and Lambrettas. And little child ones, they push along in. Even electric ones, they're scooters. It's called mopeds in the UK. I go rats ask what they're called in anybody else. UK. Logbook. <laughs> Trolls. Anyway, there we go. Nice, simple. Panels off. Showing you the basics. Wait for the next one. Millie! Keeps taking plants. Anyway. Like, share, subscribe. Wait for part three. We're going to do the engine, get rid of the yellow exhaust, and <laughs> do little bits and bobs with it. Take care of yourselves on the road.